welcome back to my YouTube channel. Uh, as always, uh, I have everything listed here on the board for you. If you want to follow along, take notes, uh, whatever, go for it. Uh, and this video, as with all of my videos, are designed to show you how to implement um, what's in my book here, The Sword and the Anvil, a definitive guide uh, for natural healthy healing from post-traumatic stress and trauma. Uh, so uh, if you got a copy, great. If not, you just go to uh, Amazon.com, Barnes & Noble Nook, uh, and look it up under Robert Soraki Jr. You'll find it. Uh, and at the end of the video, in the drop-down window, I also have a link to those pages to make it easier for you, uh, even if you just want to get more information about those books or me. So today uh, we're going to talk about my second step in my 13-step foundation to healing. And the second step is called awareness. Okay. Um, basically what this is, is uh, you have to be aware of what actually is going on in your life and, and then why. And you can't figure out the why part till you figure out what's going on. Um, but the first thing that we want to do as we're working through the second step awareness uh, is take time to heal. Okay, Give yourself the time. You're going to need it. You deserve it. Okay, And that amount of time is really different for each individual. Uh, it depends on you know your chemical makeup it depends on you know your brain and how it works it depends on how much you actually work on yourself and work on these things um, do you do it once a week once a day once a month uh, all these factors play into it so you know um, it, it really depends on the person so you can't just give yourself a time limit and say okay I'm gonna be done with this in four weeks because it just doesn't work like that uh, and you have to remember that you know in spite of all these things that happen, you know, it, it took time to get this way, all right? It took time to, to succumb to all this damage uh, that this trauma has done to you. So therefore, it's going to take time to heal as well. So just think about it like that. Like for me, for instance, you know, I suffered from post-traumatic stress for 20 years before uh, I began uh, my journey to find out how to heal from it in, in healthy, natural ways. And it took me another five or six years to where I felt comfortable enough to say that, hey, I'm healed, I'm done, uh, and I can move forward now, okay? Uh, the second thing, this is <laughs> the second part of uh, working through awareness. Uh, I, I can hear you all screaming now. Um, you know, this is a pretty bold statement, but... Just bear with me and listen. Listen to what I what I got to say here, because I'm I'm leading up to something with this. It's a very important part. Uh, it plays an important role in, in in all of my 13 steps. Okay, and that is that you have to look at your trauma as a blessing. Okay, and I can like I said, I can hear everybody screaming right now, but just bear with me. Okay, I know it was bad. Everything I went through was bad for me. All right, and uh, nobody wants these things to happen. I understand that. I get that. Trust me, been through it, been there and done that. Um, but what I'm getting at here is that the reason you can look at it as a blessing because you can learn from it, you can grow from it, and because of that, you can certainly become a better person for it. Okay, like look what I've done. Okay, you know I learned from my experiences, I grew from it, and now I'm becoming a better person for it um, because look what I'm doing. I'm passing along what I know to people. All right, I'm spreading the word. Um, I spend all day every day just getting my information out there for free. Okay, so these are th this is what I'm talking about. Um, so basically, what you're doing when you tell yourself and you start thinking about this trauma as a blessing, what you're doing is you are turning a very negative thing into a positive thing. And when you turn a negative into a positive, you win. All right. And you and you sort of what you're what you're doing is you're you're tricking your brain a little bit, all right? Or what I should say is you're retraining your brain. And this is what leads me to the next thing I want to say is that, and also what I mentioned earlier about your this this second part of awareness uh, plays into all the other thirteen steps, and especially my fifth step. 
And my fifth step is called retraining your brain. And, you know, so basically just to give you a little synopsis of what I mean by that, I mean that your, your brain, your reaction to certain stimuli are pretty much learned throughout life, okay? And they're designed to keep you alive in, in the face of grave danger, right? So, um, if you can learn this behavior, your reactions that you're having now to your trauma, if you can learn that, you can also unlearn it and you can also retrain your brain to have different responses to uh, the stimuli that you encounter in your environment, okay? So you're starting that right here in the second part to awareness. We can't fully jump into it yet because we got some other things you got to work through here first and a couple other steps you got to get through first before you get to step number five and retraining your brain, okay? So just keep that in mind and, and think about it. Start just practicing. Okay, and this is the other thing I'm trying to get you to do before you get to step number five and really have to do this and retrain your brain. Okay, I'm giving you the building blocks here, this foundation, if you will, uh, to start training your brain. Start getting your brain to start thinking like this by telling yourself and thinking to yourself, okay, this really was a blessing. I can turn this into something very positive in my life. And once you start thinking like that, it's like anything else, sports, whatever, right? Football, baseball, what do those guys and gals do every day? They practice, 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 practice. Okay, and that's what it's all about. Same concept here. So, number three. Very important part of awareness. Being aware of your symptoms. Okay, and you will have symptoms that you will be expressing, um, you know, as a result of your post-traumatic stress or your trauma or whatever it was that you went through. We, it happens to everybody, okay? So, if you're somebody who's watching this uh, you don't have PTSD or any anxiety or anything like that, you're trying to understand someone who does, um, you'll want to pay attention here as well. Because you'll start, they may not, they may probably won't even have told you that they have it, number one. And a lot of them may not even realize that they have it at that point. So this may be something where you can help out here where you may catch it before they do and make them aware of it and then possibly help get them some help. Um, so, you know, the symptoms, okay? So I had... Uh, uh, several different symptoms that that I went through uh, as I was you know going through my daily life having post-traumatic stress you know I had stuttering uh, choppy speech uh, unclear and incomplete thought patterns um, I couldn't remember things somebody would tell me something and in 10 minutes later I, I couldn't recall what they said um, the nerves in my eyelid would twitch uncontrollably I couldn't stop it uh, and the worst part was I couldn't concentrate on anything I just couldn't focus. Uh, my my brain was all over the place, and all I was trying to do every day was survive. You know, trying to get through the the panic, trying to get through the dread. You know, the depression, all that stuff. Um, so, very important. You got to be aware of what's going on. Like right back to the beginning, be aware of what's going on in your life and why. Because you can't, like I said, you can't figure out why things are going on until you figure out what's going on. All right. Once you once you figure out what's going on, you can address the start addressing the issues, okay, and then figure out why each one of those things is occurring. All right, because if you do it the other way, it's like putting the, the cart before the horse. It just doesn't work, right? Okay, number four. This is also very important. Not dealing with your trauma. All right. When you don't deal with your trauma, it uh, manifests itself in all types of different ways just like the symptoms I just gave you that I had, okay? Uh, so, the more that you suppress and ignore your trauma, the worse it's going to get over time. And trust me, I know, I told you, I suffered from it for 20 years. And over the course of that 20 years, my PTSD got worse and worse and worse. And when I exhibited symptoms, they became worse and worse and worse. Until finally one day you sort of explode. I talk about it in my first book. It was kind of like somebody shook a Coke can and it finally just blew, right? So, um, you know, you can't ignore it. Uh, you got to deal with it. You got to face it. And that really is, folks, that's the one of the toughest things to do when you have PTSD or you've been through any sort of trauma um, is to face it, right? Uh, it, it takes, it takes, it's a big decision. Uh, and it's tough. It's really tough. 
trust me, I know I had to do it, you know, and I'm, you know, I'm a Marine and uh, it was still hard for me. So uh, I completely understand it. But unfortunately, folks, it's got to be done. That's the only way to, to deal with this is to face it and start dealing with it. Um, the next part of, of uh, uh, trying to deal with your trauma is, and you'll hear this from, from all kinds of people that had any sorts of issues uh, that they needed to deal with, and that is you have to admit that you got a problem, right? Admitting it is one of the best, biggest things you can do because once you actually do admit it, you understand that, hey, I got an issue here, I need to take care of it. Because if you don't admit it, you're doing exactly what I said not to do. You're not dealing with your trauma. Okay, so it's, this is just like a, a, a sort of step that you take that sort of just opens up the door to start the healing process, start addressing what's going on with you and why. Okay. Uh, and, you know, importantly, more importantly, what you want to realize, too, is these symptoms that I've just been talking about that I exhibited, you know, with my eyes twitching and can't think or concentrate, uh, choppy speech, all that sort of stuff. These are symptoms that your body is, is exhibiting, correct? So what your body is really doing, what your brain is doing is it's saying, hello, uh, we got a problem here that we need to deal with. So basically what I'm saying is your brain is bringing these issues to your attention by exhibiting these symptoms of a specific uh, problem that you have. And same thing when you go to a doctor, right? Doctor says, what's your symptoms? If you go, I don't know, the doctor doesn't know how to treat it. He doesn't know what to treat or she doesn't know what to treat, right? So it's very important. You got to know what's going on with yourself. And then, like I said, you can begin to look at why. Okay. Fifth part of awareness is developing an awareness of self. And this is basically, you know, what I've been talking about, um, you know, understand what's going on with you uh, and why. Uh, so, but what I mean uh, even more specifically is that, uh, and I'll give you an example here uh, of what I mean by awareness of self and what's going on with you and why. So you may have heard me talk about this in other videos, but uh, one of the things I had an issue with was the color orange. So basically what happened is one morning I woke up in my room, sun was coming up, I got up, I opened the blinds and the sunlight filled up the room and all of a sudden I started having a panic attack. Couldn't figure out why, I was completely freaking out. Uh, I ran out of the room. After I finally got myself to calm down, and then I began to say, okay, something happened here. I need to go figure out what it is that occurred and then I can figure out why. So basically through a, through a series of steps, uh, just paying attention, having awareness of what's in my room, what's going on. Um, I went in there, I realized that, hey, right before that I had that panic attack, the one thing that changed was I opened the blinds. Well, what happened when the blinds opened? The sunlight came in. Well, why would sunlight bother me? I started thinking about it and I was looking around the room and I realized that there was this orange glow in my room. And I said, that's it. And then I, like that, I figured it out. Orange, that was the color of the sunrises and the sunsets uh, in the war. Okay. Also, it was the color of the bombs exploding at night and all those things I saw. And then it made sense to me. I was like, yep, yeah, this is what it is. It's, it's, this color is bringing me back to the war. That's why I had the panic attack because my brain remembered that. My brain kicked in my panic response or what uh, scientists will call your fight or flight response. But, and this isn't abnormal. This is a normal reaction to trauma. You know, this, is, this fight or flight has been inherent in human beings since their inception. So it's normal. But we got to figure out how to deal with it, especially in society today, because we're not running around chasing mastodons and buffaloes anymore, and they're not chasing us. We have, you know, we live completely different. We have different things to deal with. So, uh, but one thing I want you to understand that you have to understand that will help you as you go through this 
is that when you do have a panic attack, your brain re-records everything in your environment. And that re-recordation becomes, now becomes part of your trauma. So what happened when I had that panic attack in the room with the orange, it re-recorded my environment and it, my brain logged it away so that if it came across that again, it would kick in my fight or flight. So what happened? Every time I went in my bedroom after that, I had a panic attack, whether it was orange or not. So with that understanding, I, I, once I figured that out, I had to do some research, but I've already done that for you so you don't have to do it. Uh, I found out that this is what your brain does. So how do we combat that? Right? How do we get over it? Well, it goes back again to this uh, second part about retraining your brain. Remember talking about looking at things as a blessing, which led to retraining your brain. So basically what we have to do, and here it pops up again, is retrain our brain to have different responses to certain stimuli. Okay, And, and you can do it. I did it. So, uh, But it takes work. It's not going to happen overnight. So I just, what I did was I started going back into my room, facing this panic and this fear that I had, and I started recreating relaxing things, relaxing activities in my room, whether it was reading, whether it was writing, obviously I like to write and it's a way for me to escape, uh, or turning on relaxing music and just laying there, closing your eyes, focusing on the music. Or a lot of times what I would do is, I'm a big sports fan, I like football and baseball, and baseball worked really well for this. I would lay down, turn on a baseball game, and just shut my eyes and listen to the announcer. And I'd try to picture exactly what the announcer was saying. And so I would relax. I would get my mind off the trauma. And eventually, through that process, it would go away. I would become relaxed. And over a period of, of time, doing that over and over again, I learned. I learned a different response. I had retrained my brain. And then my room didn't bother me anymore. Neither did the color orange. And I had to do that with each individual thing. So, having said what I just said about dealing with each individual thing, is that uh, you have to take it one step at a time. You can't try to solve everything at once. People will tell you, and I'll tell you the same thing, with this, as in life, as in with business, your job, whatever it is you, you have to do. When you have too many irons in the fire, when you're trying to do too many things at once, you just never seem to get anything done, do you? It's like you be working on these things in perpetuity. So, you have to make your list, start with one thing, finish it, move to the next. And that, that's the way to get it done. And that's why I said, right back in the beginning, Take time to heal. It's going to take you time to work through this. And if you try to do it all at once, anyhow, it's going to be overwhelming. And you're just going to quit and, and, and go back to suffering the way you were. So one thing at a time, one step at a time. And one of the ways that I like to explain this, and you've, you know, if you're a regular listener, you've probably heard me talk about this before. I have a theory I call my onion theory. So... What I mean by that is your trauma start, starts out, say, is like a green little scallion, right? Just picture a little green scallion, green onion. And as you ignore your trauma and as you do not deal with it, it grows. So the scallion grows. And next thing you know, over the course of time and years, the scallion grows, grows, and grows. Next thing you know, you got this big giant onion, right? Nothing but layers. So... Your trauma, by ignoring it, grew in layers. So how do we heal? Well, one layer at a time. Like I said, one step, one thing at a time. So you start peeling back the layers of those onions one at a time. Till you get back down to that green little scallion again, which was the core, the root of your problem. And then you deal with that and heal it. And then you'll be completely healed. So that's the way I like to explain it. Your trauma builds in layers. You also have to heal it in layers. Just like an onion. If you take a whole onion just break it all apart like that, you're going to start crying stuff because it's so powerful. Same thing with your trauma and, all, and your issues is that you try to deal with them all at once. It's just going to be too powerful. So number six. It's just part of this is a question just to uh, exacerbate what I've been talking about. 
Why was I able to heal? I was able to heal because I have an awareness. I worked on it. I had an awareness of what was going on in my life, all around me, and why. And once you understand that, you can start dealing with it. And then you can start asking, why is this happening? Uh, as I do with uh, each one of my steps, in my 13 step foundation to healing that uh, is outlined in detail in my book, I uh, do this little thing where I take the word, like in this case, awareness, and I write it out like this, and I have a word for each letter of this word. And it, basically what this does is it explains that whole step. So it sort of gives you like this little overview, okay? And like I said, it's all in my book, Sword and the Anvil. And for this word awareness, let's just go through it. And remember everything we just talked about. A, worldly, alertness, releasing, explanations, right? Finding out what's going on and why. Numbing every social stigma. And that takes me back to uh, admitting that you have a problem. People with post-traumatic stress aren't going to admit they have a problem. It's a social stigma, right, to, to say that, you, that you're suffering from post-traumatic stress. But the thing we have to understand is that you're having a very normal reaction to very abnormal events in your life. So what's going on with you is completely normal. It is okay. Post-traumatic stress is not a disorder. It's a normal reaction. It was a reaction that your body has that's been designed, like I said, and been with human beings since their inception to keep them alive in times of grave danger. So, you know, we need to get rid of the stigma that post-traumatic stress is, is this horrible thing. It is horrible, but the person, what I'm getting at is the person is not horrible, and the person isn't horrible because they have this. They've just been through some unfortunate circumstances. I know, look at me, right? I'm a Marine. I'm not allowed, I wasn't allowed to go and say, hey, I have this problem. Hey, I'm scared. The Marine Corps expected me to, to suck everything up and bury it and just move forward. Well, like I said, when that happens, eventually everything comes out because your brain's gonna say, hello, something's wrong. And like I said, it's like that Coke can, you shake it, you finally explode and everything comes out. And when that happens, good things don't happen, okay? So also uh, what I want you to do for me and not, or not to forget to do is go down to the drop down window uh, below your the video here. I have, uh, check out my links to all my books, my information. So like the Sword and the Anvil book I talked about, um, there's also a link there for uh, my first book, A Line in the Sand, which is about my experience in the first Gulf War, and my uh, second book, Chrysalis. Uh, this book chronicles my struggles with PTSD, my treatments that I went through, and then how I finally decided to heal on my own and find out how to do it in healthy, natural ways. So if you're somebody that has PTSD and, and you're just found out about it and you're curious as to what's gonna possibly happen so you can prepare for it, it's a great, great reference for you. Uh, and also, if you're someone who knows somebody that has PTSD, a loved one, a family member, and you wanna understand what they're going through or they just found out and you wanna understand what's coming down the road, this is a great book for that. And that's why I wrote it because when I was going through the process, I always wished that there had been a book out there that uh, told me, you know, what I, basically what I could or what I was going to occur, or, or incur, I should say, or what was gonna happen as I went, went down this path. Uh, secondly, please help me spread my message in my videos um, so I can help as many people as possible. Uh, you can do that by, uh, subscribing to my channel. I would really appreciate that and watching the videos and then you know spreading the word to everybody that you know that could benefit from that. And uh, lastly, stay tuned for my next video which will be step number three, which is positive thinking. Obviously you can see where this all would lead to that. So I'll see you next time everybody. Be healthy. I'm out.